Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Jibel Novel, this edition Stop Stories. The government of St. Lucia is sparing no effort towards the complete removal of the Lehi Law. St. Lucia commemorates World Day to combat desertification and drought 2021. And the fatherhood and paternal bonds honored on Father's Day. The U.S. government on the 18th of June 2021 reinstated assistance to select units within the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, RSLPF. The RSLPF has been excluded from receiving U.S. assistance since the imposition of the Leahy Law in 2013 due to the alleged extrajudicial killings of 12 individuals by members of the police force. The Leahy Law prohibits U.S.-funded assistance to units of foreign security forces where there is credible information implicating that unit in the commission of gross violations of human rights. The State Department Leahy Law, however, includes an exception permitting resumption of assistance to a unit if the Secretary of State determines and reports to Congress that the government of the country is taking effective steps to bring the responsible members of the Security Forces Unit to justice. U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Linda Tagliolatella, who announced the resumption of assistance to select units last Friday, explained what is required for the complete removal of the Leahy Law on a country. What the Leahy Law requires um, is to have a reasonable, supported prosecution, which means that it has to be well documented, there has to be a significant effort to determine if something, if the alleged um, extrajudicial accountings actually took place and who was involved, and is there sufficient evidence to go forward to a trial. There is no requirement that people must be found guilty um, or convicted of charges. What it means is, is that there has to be a reasonable and respectable process by which people are held accountable and determined whether in fact they had participated or not in a particular activity. So it's up to the DPP to put together his best case or cases. It's up to him to determine and to document those cases that can't move forward because there is insufficient evidence. And from there, we can move forward to go back to the United States government and discuss whether this is acceptable under the Leahy laws and whether we can then remove the restrictions. The government of St. Lucia remains committed to ensuring the complete removal of the sanctions. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shasne explained that the government has been working diligently to ensure just that. He indicated that while the matter rests ultimately with the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, the government of St. Lucia has and will continue to avail the required resources to see the matter through. The Prime Minister expressed confidence in the Office of the DPP. I believe that the DPP's office is doing everything to protect the and enshrine the rule of law in St. Lucia. Sir, that's his most important aspect. He also has to make sure that justice is served. And justice means that a person is innocent until they're proven guilty. And we do have a process here which is called a coroner's inquest. And we have the outcome of all coroner's inquests on the concern matters. Four of them, the coroner's inquest ruled that um, there was no, no wrongdoing. And we have one coroner's inquest which indicates that there requires to be further investigation. The only entity in St. Lucia that can in any way um, challenge a coroner's inquest is the DPP's office. And that challenge has to come on the basis of evidence. So the DPP has to be satisfied that the evidence that his office has collected is sufficient to stand up in a court in his challenge to overrule a coroner's inquest. Um, again, it is not my responsibility to be involved in the details of the DPP's investigations. I am satisfied that I have received requests on a regular basis for resources, and we have made those resources available to him. Um, I'm hoping that the DPP will make some pronouncement, because I think it's been some time, and that whether he feels he has enough evidence to challenge any of the coroner's inquest, that's his part. 
Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, begin there. The Sufra Marine Management Agency and the German Agency for International Development, GIS, formalized technical cooperation at a recently held ceremony. We get the details from Jesse Leos. St. Lucia is one of four small island developing states in the Eastern Caribbean to benefit from a German-funded project to lay the foundation for the successful introduction of sustainable financing mechanisms for marine protected or managed areas. The Sufra Marine Management Agency, SMMA, is the local beneficiary of this undertaking by the German Agency for International Development, GIS. The project includes maximizing SMMA capabilities to draw down funds from the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund and other regional donors, also human capacity building, and drawing up national plans of action. Project manager for the GIS financing program is Dr. Hammond Volker. He presented an overview of the project during a virtual ceremony to formalize technical cooperation between the SMMA and GIS. Mr. Ricky explained uh, a lot about the revenues that are possible together from tourism. But besides that, and we have seen in the COVID-19 crisis that these are very volatile. So from one day to another, tourism almost went down to zero. So this might not be the only reliable or should not be the only source of revenue for the marine protected areas. This is why we want to support the SMMA in accessing funds from the CBF, the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, or other donors that are active in this region and the sector, um, yeah, to diversify the sources of income. During the ceremony, Dr. Volker was officially welcomed by the government of St. Lucia through permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Barrymore Felicien. The official wished Dr. Volker all the best during his tenure on the island and pledged technical support from the government in the rollout of this project. We strongly endorse the technical cooperation agreement between GIZ and the SMME. So that support is there and we'll commit the technical resources to make that possible. There is a need for a more robust financing platform to ensure SMME performance and protection of the marine space. We therefore welcome this initiative. It is timely now. It would have been perhaps even a little better if it had taken place before COVID-19. But now we have, we have it here. We are pleased to have that support and the intervention of GIZ providing the support for laying the foundation. And it's important for us to make the distinction. They are going to be laying the foundation for a sustainable financing mechanism. This, when successful, will provide the SMME with the financial stability required to properly execute its mandate and boost performance. GIS support to the SMMA precedes this 2021 Sustainable Marine Financing Program. It is a progression from the Caribbean Aquaterrestrial Solutions Program in its phases 1 and 2 that lasted until 2020, supporting marine managed areas with infrastructure and management tools, as well as improving climate resilience through systematic resource management. SMMA Executive Chairman Ricky Alexander says the agency looks forward to the continued engagement with GIS. It is important to note that existing financial contributions are well below requirements and reveal a strong disparity in collection and user payments, all of which affect protected area performance. Establishing sustainable financing for MPAs is thus an essential exercise to help marine protected areas reach its effective management capacity. This is why the formalizing of this important partnership with GIZ is critical as one of the important mechanisms to enhance the sustainability of the SMMA. The German Agency for International Development, GIS, has been providing support to St. Lucia and the Eastern Caribbean since 2013. It currently works with 120 countries globally and is funded mainly by the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. With the country focused on economic recovery in light of COVID-19 challenges, the importance of supporting local continues to be emphasized in all sectors. 
Massey Stores recently launched a promotional campaign to create greater awareness and visibility of small and medium-sized local manufacturers who supply its stores is one such example of how this is taking root. The Supermarket Retailers Campaign complements the national initiative of the Ministry of Commerce, which invites the public to love all things St. Lucia. Hamadi Mark tells us more. With the right support, small and medium-sized manufacturing enterprises have the potential to boost economic growth. It is this understanding that spurs Massey Stores to improve its relationships with the supplier segment, with accelerated focus since COVID-19. Rigodol's Spice is a local manufacturer of herbal teas and spice shakers. Owner Jacinta Rigabat says her company has been able to grow and leverage various market opportunities over the seven years that she has been working with Massey Stores. Look, with COVID, I'm just saying to myself, it wasn't Massey. I did not know what I would do because Massey have helped my business to grow a lot. And a lot of people know about my product. Imagine when I go out there, some people will tell me, eh, I didn't know about that product. Where can I get it? I tell them, all Massey outlet. And when I say all Massey outlet, I'm feeling as if I'm floating in the air. All of the inputs to Rigodol Spice come from herbs indigenous to St. Lucia and cultivated by the owner herself. I've worked about two to three hotels and I'm seeing the kind of teas they're using. So I decided to do something different. My grandmother used to grow a lot of ginger and a lot of turmeric. And one day I decided to have some ginger, some turmeric, and then uh, I decide to grind it, turn it into powder form. And I gave it to a few friends, to samplers, and they gave me some great feedback. So I decide if I'm getting so much feedback on that, good feedback, it's best I go ahead and try some other herbs. Ria Koshe, Sue de la Peau, is a locally made skincare line of body butter and body scrub that comes in a variety of fragrances. While still a relatively small startup, owner Maria Johnny says the feedback from the public is very encouraging. She is confident that the very good working relationship which she enjoys with Massey and the added visibility from the campaign will help push her small business in a positive direction. Well, this is a very good idea. I mean, you are actually pushing the local people to come out there to do their stuff. And as I said, everybody has talent. Everybody can do what they put their mind to do. As long as they put their mind, they can do whatever that they can do. Don't be afraid. I mean, I'm shy. <laughs> but whatever you, you put your trust in, you can make it happen. For those persons out there that want to start their own products, go ahead, start. You have businesses like Massey that and the government trying to promote it. Why not? These two uniquely St. Lucian products are all natural and can be found at Massey Stores supermarkets island-wide. From the Government Information Service, I'm Hilmedi Mark. The Department of Forestry joined hands with the CIBC First Caribbean Bank to commemorate World Day to Combat Desertification and Drought 2021. The 2021 Desertification and Drought Day, held on June 17, focused on turning degraded land into healthy land. In an effort to restore ecosystem services and integrate the ecosystem management approach, the Department of Forestry, in collaboration with First Caribbean Bank, CIBC, held a tree planting event in Monsito. Assessments carried out by the Department of Forestry provided evidence of overutilization of resources for livelihoods in the area, which has the potential to result in a loss of resource base. The forest reserve was intentionally cleared for the production of charcoal and planting of agricultural crops. The activity saw the transplanting of approximately 300 trees with an eye toward combating deforestation. Country manager of First Caribbean Bank CIBC St. Lucia, Nigel Olivier, says that this initiative comes at a fitting time as the bank celebrates its 100th year of banking in the Caribbean. We wanted to have something that would be uh, significant and long-lasting and something that would contribute to keeping a greener space. And um, it, it sort of fitted well with the fact that we have branches throughout the, the region in all 16 territories. And as you know, the branch, a branch is also a part of a tree. And we thought that, um, you know, it, that would be a good thing to do. So we decided that um, let's do some tree planting. And so we've done that in all our territories and, um, you know, today here in St. Lucia and 
quite frankly, I think we're probably going to be the best because I think we, we have you know, a very special partnership in that today sort of fits in with what is happening as a country and then overall with what we're doing as a, as a bank. The event saw many other national agencies and NGOs coming together in solidarity for the cause. Acting Chief Forestry Officer Alwyn Donnelly says the tree planting campaign also aims to help raise environmental awareness and shed light on the importance of its protection. The activity here today would bring you know, all those stakeholders, all our partners to actually come and plant the tree. So they would actually take the tree and place it in the soil. You know, it's not like we planting and they just come in and watch. No, they actually come in to plant. And, and that is also significant because, you know, that kind of activity can be replicated, could be done, you know, in other places. Um, they can come back in the next three to six months, you know, and see the progress, you know, of what their own their own work you know their own labor they could come back and, and see it um and in that way you know when you know people are engaged you know in that way in doing the, the practical work them, themselves i mean sometimes there is uh, greater um value you know that they place on the resources it Mr. Donnelly encourages the public to continue to adhere to regulations put in place by the Department of Forestry as the forest reserve and protected forest systems of the country are intended to perform essential functions such as safeguarding and regulating the island's water supply and preventing soil erosion and landslides. The spotlight was placed on the role of a father in the family setting and his importance to society as St. Lucia joined the rest of the world in celebrating Father's Day on Sunday, 20th June 2021. On a special edition of the program Issues and Answers, aired on the national television network NTN, host Dr. Barry Innocent and Dr. Emmanuel McLaurin engaged in a fruitful discussion on the father's influence on the holistic development of a child. Dr. Emmanuel McLaurin, family counselor and bishop at the Bethel Tabernacle Empowerment Center, believes that fathers are to provide a sense of security, acceptance and belonging to the life of his child or ward. Because one of the things we've learned in our, as we deal with counseling, that if the father's role is not proper, proper within the home and the child does not learn how to um, relate to a father, it becomes difficult to relate oh. to God as the father. And we have found that because if they had a bad um, fathering process in the home, so they see God from the same light of mm. that father. And so sometimes they see him as creator, but they cannot receive him as father. So the father role is very, very important. Very, very important. Yeah, you know, very, very important, important that they, they, un they understand that in their role, they must um, be there as a father with all the stuff written confidence and, and building them, guiding them, leading them, spending time with them, yes. and, and really leading them now spiritually. Yeah. Dr. Barry Innocent indicated that the Department of Gender Relations has seen an increase in participation from father figures in the life of their children, a welcomed development. The Gender Relations Department, um, they were telling me through the director there, she was telling me that it has been reported mm. that lately, as you already said, there seems to be a shift in the behavior of, of a, a lot of fathers. She was saying that the schools are reporting that okay. you yeah. have more um, fathers, not more than, more than mothers, but more than usual. You have right. fathers attending PTA meetings, visiting the teachers. You have fathers dropping their, ch their children at preschools and daycare, carrying them, like you said. And she said to me that there seemed to be an improved um, sense of responsibility in, in, in fathers in the way they, they perform their role and be having an integral part in the life of the child. Fathers are encouraged to engage in positive communication with their children and to make a conscious effort to raise their children to become productive members of society. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Mama, you okay there? Doc said I need to make better choices to get my high blood pressure under control. He said I need to watch the salt. <laughs> I think he meant you need to do things like read the nutrition facts on the back of food packages. Oh, eh, eh. 
these labels are so hard to understand. Why can't they be simpler? They could be. If our leaders adopt the warning labels that are shaped like a stop sign on the front of the food packages. Wishful thinking, my dear. No, mommy, it's not. CARICOM leaders are currently voting on whether or not they want to introduce them. These labels will make it easier for my mom, you and even me to tell when packaged foods are high amounts of sugar, fats and salts. He's right. Eating too much of sugars, fats and salts is linked to obesity and non-communicable diseases like heart disease, diabetes and cancers. Leading causes of death in the Caribbean. You know? My mom is not the only one who needs to watch what she eats. Us children are at risk too. We're basically drinking ourselves sick. Now last deal, you need to wear glow. Caribbean leaders can make a real difference. Now more than ever, we need them to step up. Now more than ever, we need better labels so we can make better choices for better health. This message was brought to you by the St. Lucia Cancer Society in association with the Healthy Caribbean Coalition. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Department, Kini Vesco Sabilité pour Information en Gouvernement Cetlici, la CGIS, à Semipi Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, Capositou Nouvelle en Creole, Président Primus Hutchinson. Export Saint Lucia. J'ai mis ici pour des organisations femmes qui engagées en agricole en Saint Lucie. Ça y est, l'homme Helen's Daughters. Mais que dit le 16 juin 2021? Chef officier exécutif pour Export Saint Lucia, son état Daniel, si y a un argument des bonnes compagnes et puis chef Helen's Daughters, Mademoiselle Kathleen Carew. Organisation Helen's Daughters qui a embrassé un spécial objectif pour bâtir les femmes en cette commune pays, c'est la capacité pour bâtir et accroître l'habilité économique. Alors, l'organisation a déjà établi une initiative pour indiquer et renforcer l'effort de femmes, c'est la avec les jeunes, pour espérer ses profits en production et produits agricoles qui ont récolté. Par conséquent, l'export saint Lucia a supporté, indiqué et facilité les produits locaux pour vendre en notre pays. Organisation a aussi avancé effort pour semer information en cette manière que peut vendre produits à sur la place régionale et internationale et pour ça là, il y a fouillé et chercher pour n'importe l'occasion pour aider jeunesse fille madame et à part de ça organisation Helen's Daughters pour renforcer habilité et pouvoir économique. Durant ce moment il y a si artiste là mais que passé chef Helen's Daughters mademoiselle Kathleen Carew Parler de l'importance de la collaboration, ça là, et faire comprendre des goûts et l'importance de la collaboration, en particulier en secteur agricole, pour aider les gens qui plus ne brisent, principalement les jeunesses et les femmes. Mademoiselle Caro, qui a créé l'initiative, ça là, qui a ouvert un grand chemin pour les femmes et les jeunesses participer en plein à un programme pour vendre des produits à la place de cette ci c'est le chef export Saint Lucia, Mamzel Sonita Daniel. Agence Lee, j'ai examiné meilleure façon pour aider pour ces programmes Helen's Daughters d'ouvrir. Mamzel Daniel déclare que travailler organisation femme agricole sala, c'est un mappé puis projet, particulièrement femme qui engagé à agricole en ses habitations cette ici. Daniel déclare que en parmi ces agences là, ça y a fait, c'est pour ouvrir chemin pour Helen's Daughters trouver la place neuf pour vendre produits et services hors cette ici à l'autre pays. À ce moment là, c'est pour euh, dès l'année, côté export Saint Lucia, il peut tuer développement business agricole, étonnement et l'autre activité pour pousser et agrandir produits agricoles et femmes et jeunes filles à produire à cette ici. Il y a un institut qui a assisté pour renforcer les bonnes leçons et supporter le programme d'éducation à cette ici, ça y est le Effective Learning Institute, qui a aidé principalement la famille qui n'est pas en assistance à un haut degré. C'est une grande organisation qui est établie en pays Saint-Kitts. Une branche qui a opéré à cette ici, elle va conduire un individu 
qui travaille en système d'éducation PIA ou en bulletin. Ça, c'est Peter Anius. Institution pour aider aussi l'éducation en cette ici, car c'est des enfants de l'école qui sortent à la famille qui pauvre et puis livre l'école, uniforme, assistance finance, l'argent pour payer la transportation. Par chez commission, avec l'autre assistance qui est nécessaire pour programme l'école. Attention, c'est pour grand support ça là, faire pour encourager plus de monde, pour développer un plus fort l'intérêt à l'école et pour ne pas quitter l'école avant l'air. Selon le coordinateur du programme, Peter Anius, il a fait un grand effort pour réduire la source de quantité de qui n'est pas intéressé pour continuer à l'école encore. Anius déclare que il y a plusieurs parents qui ne sont pas capables pour fournir le maillot et puis des grands assistants de l'école et puis toutes nécessité qui ont mérité. Alors, c'est ça là, établir ces divers assistants là pour s'en faire l'école avec la famille. On nous dit aussi, ce n'est pas l'objectif là, c'est pour placer la famille avec les enfants à une meilleure position pour que ça là puissent trouver une meilleure éducation. Fiesta Flavius, qui est responsable pour trois enfants à l'école, j'ai trouvé et qu'a continué de trouver support pour l'institution ça là. Il fait un appel pour le public là, longer yon l'an men charitable pour M. Agnès, le yon wey bo la wey kamande pour assistance. Parce que tout ça c'est pour aider maman et l'école et puis par an yon, qui plein de brise en cette ici. Et ces gestions de assistance éducation ça là, j'ai collaboré et puis magasin mariage à initiative là pour assister les plus pauvres de la famille, exactement yon, qui a assisté l'école. Bureau des affaires électorales, cette ci par les citoyens pays ni trop mal tête pour recevoir assistance au bureau en ligne de registration pour aide pour quatre aides. Assistant chef en département électoral, Alain Fialanel, déclare que les officiers bureau ont commencé à visiter plusieurs écoles, communes et paroisses à cette ci pour poursuivre le service de registration. Ça So nous tenons des trois ans côté nous t'es venu nous t'es allé en dix fois combien nous fait des trois ans micro nous t'es fait les week-ends okay. dimanche et samedi nous fait micro nous fait belle vie à chaque fois qu'on nous a parlé nous a fait les week-ends à soirée et c'est mon ça t'es qu'à service c'est service ça parce que l'autre à Paris c'est toi um, bio ça nous ni office nous vieux fort côté mon micro descend avec nous ni Castri côté mon babono tout partout mais nous also fait service à babono avec mon chi. Ça c'était la voix euh, deuxième grand chef à département électoral c'est aussi madame Elmfia Lionel. C'est comme ça nous entrons pour nouvelle là. Moi quand même c'est autant pour regarder. Moi quand bon invitation pour je ne puis moi encore c'est dire quand ça fait la vie. Dans les présentoir l'autre nouvelle à quoi la présent. Moi quand vieux présentoir Lionel. Merci à Pil Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.